Welcome to our today's webinar, Metabolic Activity Inside Microfluidics. My name is Gernot Jon and I am Director of Marketing and Innovation at Presense Precision Sensing. Today with me is Dr. Robert J. Meyer, who will tell you all the details about our imaging system VisiSense. Before we go into that detail, let me tell you a few words about Presense and who we are. So, Presense was founded in 1997 as a spin-off of the local university here in the south of Germany in Bavaria, in Regensburg. It's privately owned and we have currently more than 90 employees. The company is certified according ISO 9001 and ISO 13485, which is the standard for medical products. Our product range covers parameters and measuring systems for oxygen, pH, carbon dioxide and biomass. And of course, we are constantly expanding this product range. We are offering non-invasive sensor systems, so the measurement, measurement through a transparent wall, which can be used in bottles, in shake flask, microplates and of course bioreactors. We have also microsensors for a minimal microinvasive measurement which can be used in biological systems like tissue or small or big animals, but is also in use for packaging systems and the quality control. Okay, uh, before we start with our presentation, or to say Robert will start with the presentation and give you this, all these details, I would like to um, tell you a little bit about how we want to do this. Uh, at any time, you have the possibility to use the questions window in the, in the uh, panel of this webinar software to ask questions. And uh, during the presentation and after the presentation, we would like to answer these questions to you. And now I have a, um, a first question to all of you, to the audience, and this is whether you have already measured oxygen in your scientific work. Um, so while we are waiting for you um, to answer this uh, question, I would like to introduce uh, our today's speaker, Dr. Robert J. Meyer, who is working at Presense in the R&D Department for Imaging Solutions. Before Robert joined Presense, he was working at here at the local institute for analytical chemistry, chemo and biosensors at the University of Regensburg. He has more than eight years of experience in the development and also in the application of chemical optical sensors and imaging systems. Robert? Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Thank you Gernot for the warm welcome and uh, welcome everybody to our today's webinar on metabolic activity inside microfluidics. The subline of my presentation is called Oxygen Measured and Visualized with the VZSense Oxygen Imaging System. During the next 30 minutes, I want to show you how, uh, why oxygen is important to be measured in microfluidic devices, how oxygen can be measured with luminescence optical sensors, how the VC system, work, uh, VC sense system works, and also how you can implement the sensor for some new systems. And further on, uh, we, I will show you some practical examples. And also, um, then you, we can make a question and answer in Roundup. So, um, I want to start my presentation with a provocative question to you. Have you ever thought about seeing oxygen inside your chip? Many people will deny this question, but today I want to show you how you can visualize the invisible gas oxygen with our VCSense imaging system. Oxygen is a pretty important factor, not only in microfluidic devices, but in general. Um, it's a key factor for cellular metabolism, it's also a very important factor for monitoring enzymatic reactions. For example, oxidases consume oxygen, uh, and uh, while consuming this oxygen, you can monitor your reaction we are measuring the oxygen. Oxygen is also an important factor in respirometry measurements, 
and in checking the perfusion quality of systems or of microfluidic chips. If you want to mimic microphysiological systems, oxygen has a, a very important role which I want to show you on the next slide. Further, oxygen is oftentimes a reactant or product in many chemical or biochemical reactions and they can be monitored. We are monitoring the oxygen and it's also a regulating factor for many biochemical reactions. So overall, to sum it up, it's pretty important to know the oxygen concentration in cell cultivation. If you try to mimic physiological tissue or physiological conditions for your cells, it's pretty important to know the oxygen concentrations that are really present in physiological tissue. This is called physoxia from physiological oxygenation. In this table, you can see that the oxygen concentration inside the human body is highly variable. Starting from air, which uh, equals 100% acid ratio of oxygen, oxygen, or 160 tor oxygen partial pressure, and it also equals 20.9% pure oxygen. It drops down if you go to the alveoli. The air in the alveoli has just 70% uh, oxygen, if you go on further in the body system, the arterial blood has approximately 63% oxygen. And if you're working with organs, uh, you see that the oxygen uh, values drop down pretty harshly to approximately 21% in brain, or 26% in liver, also 45% in kidney, muscle and bone marrow have 18 uh, or 30% respectively. If you're working with, with uh, skin tissue samples, uh, you have even more variable oxygen concentrations and they can vary from 0.5% oxygen up to 22% oxygen. To sum it up, you see that the oxygen concentration inside human tissue can vary from 0.5% oxygen up to 100% oxygen. And it's pretty important to have the right cell cultivation conditions in your system if you try to mimic the physiological systems. Even if you're working with stem cells, uh, oxygen supply is pretty important because this differentiation of the stem cells and also the pro proliferation of the stem cells is highly dependent on the oxygen supply. So you see that it's pretty good to know the oxygen concentration you're working with. So how, you, how we can measure oxygen? There are two ways. First way is uh, Clark electrodes, and the second way is luminescent optical sensors. Clark electrodes have many uh, or several drawbacks uh, if you want to use them in microfluidic systems. First of all, they are pretty bulky, so uh, you can imagine that if you try to measure minimal volumes, it's pretty complicated to do, to do so. Further on, they need electrical wire contact that needs to go outside from the microfluidic devices. And maybe the most important point is during the measurement of oxygen, there is a chemical re reaction taking place where oxygen is, con uh, is transferred into OH- ions, hydroxy ions, and this consumes oxygen while you're measuring it. And also you may alter the pH of your solution while measuring. You can imagine that um, if you use very bulky volumes, um, that doesn't play a major role, but as you go down to very small volume sizes, such as in microfluidic devices, every oxygen molecule can count. Luminescence optical sensors can overcome these drawbacks. The benefits from optical chemical sensors is that you can measure non-invasively through the wall of your microfluidic chip. That means that we are measuring a light signal and light can penetrate through transparent walls and thus you can measure from the outside the inside oxygen concentration in your chip. So you do not need to open your chip or you do not need to take samples so you avoid oxygen ingress in your system or if you work in an incubator you avoid CO2 emissions from the incubator and then you do not have to wait until a stable atmosphere is generated again. The sensors are not made out of glass, so there's no breaking. And maybe the most important factor is that they do not consume oxygen while measuring. I will show you that later on when I uh, present you the principle of oxygen measurement with luminescence optical sensors. 
And another important factor for microfluidic devices is that the signal is independent from the flow velocity. So fluorescence optical sensors translate an invisible sample component, in our case it's the oxygen, into a light signal. We use fluorescent dyes that need to be excited with a certain wavelength. And if they are excited, they can emit the light uh, through a redshifted fluorescent signal. And this signal transmits the uh, encoded quantitative information about the respective analyte, in our case, oxygen. The principle of luminescent optical sensors is called dynamic quenching. Dynamic quenching can be explained in two simple cases. Just imagine a case where you have an indicator dye and no oxygen present, and in the second case, you have oxygen present. Whereas in the first case, you excite the dye with a specific wavelength, the dye gets into excited state, and then it can emit light uh, through fluorescence. In the second case, when oxygen is present, it first looks nearly similar, that you excite the dye, the dye gets into its excited state, and within its, its, excite, in its excited state, it can collide with an oxygen molecule, transfer the energy, energy to the oxygen molecule, and gets back to its ground state without sending out luminescence. So what we get is upon increasing analyte concentrations, a decreasing luminescence signal. Why is it beneficial to image analyte distributions and not just take one-spot measurements? I want to give you some important points on this. First of all, with imaging, you can generate thousands of measurement points within one image. So you can generate an analyte map over your whole chip. You can also record over time changes, and you can compare different regions. This is critically important in microfluidic devices because if you use single spot measurements, uh, it, uh, the results are critically dependent on where you put your sensing element. If you put it at the inlet, for example, you will get different results than if you put it at the outlet region or somewhere in between in the reaction room. Furthermore, with imaging, you can detect metabolic hotspots, so you can see where all the action takes place. You can visualize gradients, not only artificial gradients, but you can also visualize uh, natural gradients that are caused by oxygen consumptions of your specimen of, or of your samples. And gradients of molecular oxygen are of particular interest due to the fact that many important biological processes either occur at interfaces or are regulated by the flux of oxygen. You can do quality control with imaging. This is also very important in microfluidic devices if people use PDMS as chip material, because PDMS is always stated as oxygen permeable polymer, but actually the permeability of oxygen of PDMS strongly depends on the thickness of the PDMS layer. And you will always have a balance between the diffusion through the PDMS and the oxygen consumption inside the chip. So with imaging, you can also optimize your chip design and cross-check the quality of your chips. Further on, you can do reaction monitoring via imaging. You can see when reactions are finished, if they are mixing properly, etc. And you can do that with our WeZSense imaging system that you can see here in this picture. The measurement principle of the WeZSense imaging system is pretty simple to explain. We have a detection unit and sensor foils. The sensor foils need to be inside the microfluidics, and the detection with the excitation and also the recording the emit, uh, emis, um, emission light is done from the outside while pointing at with the detector. The measurement principle our technique relies on is called wavelength gratiometrically referenced imaging. That's pretty hell of a word, but it can be explained in two or three simple sentences. Here you can see how our sensor foils approximately look like. We have a fluorescent dye doped polymer layer and a polymer support. In this polymer layer, um, the fluorescent dyes are immobilized 
and we have immobilized an indicator die and a reference die. Whereas the indicator die, as, a sh as I've shown you before, changes its fluorescent properties upon varying analyte concentrations, the reference element stays always constant. And if you build a ratio out of those two emissions in each spot of the sensor foil, you will get a reference to the information on oxygen supply inside the chip. So how we can do that uh, on every single point on the, on, the, on the sensor foil? We can do that with our VCSense detector chip. And this detector chip records colorful images in red, green, and blue color. What we get is if we record an image, we get a colored image. But what we do is we split it up again, or we split up the channels into the three color compartments. So we have a red image, a green image, and a blue image. And if we then divide the channels, we get a reference ratio image, which responds to a reference sensor response. The VCSense system consists out of three main components, the hardware, sensor foils, and the software. The hardware is a USB-powered uh, handheld detector unit, which has an integrated CMOS chip with 1.3 megapixels, a microscope, a microscope lens for magnification from 10-fold to 70-fold with a manual focus, so you can adjust your field of view, you can adjust the distance to the sample, etc. And it's equipped with an optic block, including eight LEDs and excitation filters on the excitation side, and emission filters and diffusion filters on the camera side. The sensor foils for the VCSense system are very thin polymer foils, and these can be cut into any desired size or shape, just by using scissors. The measuring range for, oxy for our oxygen system is from 0 to 100% air saturation, which equals 0 to 20.9% pure oxygen. The response time is approximately 30 seconds. If you remove the optical isolation, which I will show you later on in the presentation, it gets down to some seconds. The sensor foils uh, can have any size and any shape. Um, but the maximum field of view from the detector is 40 times 40 millimeters. The number of sensing points recorded in one image is approximately 300,000. And the sensors work optimally in a temperature range from 5 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. And the sensor foils are compatible with aqueous solutions, certain amounts of ethanol and methanol, and are stable from pH 2 to pH 10. So now let's head on to the software part. The software WeSense Analytical 1 it comprises two major parts. One is the acquisition part and one is the evaluation part. In the, uh, in the acquisition part, you can record the images, you can record time series, you can make sessions, you can name sessions, you can uh, refine sessions that you have already recorded, etc. And in the evaluation part, you do all the calculating and analyzing of the oxygen max. In the evaluation part, you can do pseudo color representations of oxygen values that you have recorded, or you can do multi-plots with uh, comparing different images in one image. You can do also one-on-one -on -one comparison if you want to, for example, see the beginning of the reaction and the end of the reaction or of your cellular growth. You can do alpha blending to see underlying structures. And you can do time series profiles and much more. So before we head on to the implementation of sensors in microfluidic chips, uh, I think we have a few questions to answer. Gerno? Robert, yes, and uh, thank you very much so far. Yeah, before we go that way, um, there is one question. I'm not sure. Maybe you already mentioned, uh, but we can uh, make a clarification here. Um, 
can it can the sensor only measure through PDM uh, PDMS or I mean what's about glass I think you already mentioned it what's about uh, different uh, materials like uh, silicium wafers or something like this actually you can measure through all transparent materials or also uh, to uh, through semi-transparent uh, materials as long as you see the signal and as long as you uh, you see enough signal so um, you can use glass, you can use PDMS, you can use other plastics or thermoplastics, etc. Okay, uh, another question concerning uh, sterilization methods. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, you can sterilize the sensors. Uh, you can sterilize the sensors. We are using 70% of ethanol, for example, but you can also use gamma irradiation or you can plasma uh, activate the sensors uh, to get them sterilized. Uh, another question is, uh, are these sensors designed as reusable or single-use uh, systems? Officially, the foils are designed as single-use sensors, but uh, as long as you see signal, you can recalibrate them and reuse them. Okay, then there's uh, a question about uh, the thickness of sensor foils um, on different support materials. Um, we offer different support materials. We have support materials from 50 microns uh, up to, to uh, 125 micrometer in thickness, and the sensing layer is less than 10 microns in thickness. If you include the optical isolation, you will top up another 25 microns. But as you use the sensor foil as a bottom plate for your microfluidic device, you will not alter the channel depth. So you use it just as a bottom plate and use your microfluidic systems as they are. Okay, I think we can go. Um, oh, the, just see, there's another uh, question coming. I think that's again um, um, asking for sterilization. What's about autoclavation of the system? Actually, autoclavation is not okay. possible. So uh, please continue to uh, uh, send us your question. I think that's a great interactive uh, webinar we have today. What I'd like to do now is uh, to share the results from our uh, poll uh, from the beginning. Have you already measured oxygen in your scientific work? Uh, more than 80% say yes, 18% uh, uh, 18, 18 uh, have not done this so far. Uh, thank you for, for sharing this with us. Uh, we had um, two other questions uh, uh, for you while um, sending the uh, application to the webinar. This was about uh, whether you are already measuring or using the present systems. This is actually true for 60% and 20% uh, of the audience is already working with the VCSense system. Um, again, please continue to ask questions and I'm happy to announce now the second part about the implementation of sensors in the microfluidic chips. Robert. Thank you, Gano. Now we'll show you some methods how you can implement the sensor faults into your microfluidic chips. I want to present you two approaches, but there are even more approaches, but I'll show you the two most easy and straightforward ones. The first approach is uh, on how you implement the sensor foils uh, in PDMS or COC chips. Um, this is a me method that has been published in 2013 from an MIT group and from Christopher Ox and his colleagues. Um, and they used PDMS channel stamped chip toppings or COC channel stamped chip toppings uh, to cover uh, or to bond them with the sensor foil. They glued the sensor foil onto a glass slide and activated or covered that sensor foil with a very thin layer of PDMS. On the other hand, uh, they plasma activated their chips um, while exposing them to APTS solution and then the chips were simply plasma bonded. And then the uh, bottom of the chip is consisting uh, or consists of the sensor foil and the chip remains as it was before. Another very simple and easy strategy to implement the sensor foils into microfluidic systems is uh, a way that I want to show you, show you now, We are the use of EBV sticky slides. I have a short video presentation on that, and I will overdub this.
So first of all, we take out the sensor out of its packaging. The pack packaging is light type to protect the sensor from excessive ambient light. We take out the sensor and you can cut it into a desired shape or size. In this example, we used a fairly simple chip with a um, straight rectangle shaped um, channel. So we just cut off a piece, a rectangle shaped piece of the sensor foil. You can glue this sensor foil onto a microscope slide. Either way, in this case, how we show it here, we are using self-adhesive sensor foils or we are using the provided glue with the system. You can also see that the chip has two different colored size, sides. A white colored side, which is the optical isolation, and a reddish colored side, which is uh, the sensing side. Um, the sensing side faces the detector and the optical isolation faces the channel. You can also optionally remove the optical isolation to increase the spatial resolution of your system. This is shown in here. Just peel it off and now it's removed. And now you see that both sides has, have this reddish color. The side where the sensor is glued on um, is the channel facing side and this has to be uh, covered with the sticky slide. The sticky slide is this piece here in the middle and it's equipped with an uh, assembly block. You just put in this, our sensor slide into the assembly block remove the adhesive protection layer from the sticky slide and place it on the sensor slide. Just give it a slight press and then you can turn it around. The lure locks perfectly match the manufactured holes in there. Then you can assemble the block and use the pressure applying tool to give it a slight press. Just put it in there, make one or two presses, and then the chip is bonded and ready to use. So you can see this can really be easily done in about two or three minutes. Just disassemble the block and take out the chip and then it's ready. These sticky slides are also equipped with lure locks, so you can just add, uh, add lure lock tubings, and then you can use it for cell experiments. So I hope you saw that the implementation of the sensor foils is pretty easy and straightforward. Now we head on to the visualization of oxygen concentrations inside chips. I prepared a sample chip uh, with a snake-like channel structure bonded to uh, a sensor foil. The chip material is PDMS and uh, I made a sample reaction to show you the principle on how it reacts and how it works. Um, and the reaction was the oxygen depletion of inside the chip we are using sodium sulfide. So this is the real color image that you get if you record the image. You can already see that there are some distinct changes from a greenish color to a more reddish color. And once you transfer it to the oxygen concentrations that you can see in here, is you have a direct link to the oxygen concentrations via a color chart. You can also take uh, regions of interest and make uh, many more um, analyzing things with, with those images in the software. I also want to show you here a short movie where you can see how the reaction takes place inside the chip. So at the beginning the whole picture was white representing uh, oxygen values of approximately 100% acid ration. But once the reaction takes place, the oxygen is depleted and the values drop down inside the chip.
Now back to a point I mentioned earlier in my presentation, it's critically dependent on where you measure inside your microcritic devices. Um, I, I will now show you three different regions of interest I set in the channel of the chip. One is at the very beginning of the chip, at the inlet. You can see that after a short period of time, the oxygen values drop down to approximately, let's say, 18% air saturation. So you see that the reaction is not fully finished at that point. If you head on to a later point in your channel structure, for example in here in the first curve, you can see that it drops down again, but it drops down totally to zero, so the reaction is fully finished at this place. And if you head on further in the chip to a later position, you will see that uh, there's a long time nothing happening till the solution um, hits the region of interest and then the oxygen values drop down. So I can only recommend to always measure the whole image of your chip uh, and get the full picture and then you can to compare different regions of interest and see where the action takes place. So let's head on to some practical examples. Um, my first example is hypoxia monitoring over a time course of a cellular sample inside a microfluidic device. This was a round seeded cell spot and this cell spot was imaged via uh, measuring the oxygen. So at first you see our round spot uh, represented by a slightly um, decreased oxygen signal. But once you head on in your reaction you see that all the oxygen is consumed that is beneath the cells and once they consumed all the oxygen they started migrating to the outside of the fronts and the spot gets bigger and bigger. The Vsense system is fully compatible with the use in, in incubators. So you can just place it inside, make your reaction inside, you do not need to open the incubator while measuring or recording time series. Just keep it inside, let your reaction running and monitor it from the outside. Here are some more examples from uh, the MIT group of Ox. Um, they made an artificial hypoxia chip and con uh, controlled the quality of their chips and uh, took a look at if they are having uh, uniform oxygen conditions in their cell reaction chamber. And what they investigated was they pumped in different uh, gases in the uh, outer channels and saw if the conditions in the cell reaction chamber get uniform and they, they um, confirmed this. They furthermore made hepatocyte cultures on COC chips and PDMS chips and uh, there you can see another fact that I mentioned earlier. It's critically important on which material you're using because if you're using a COC chip for example as here in the first row you can see that the cells consume more oxygen than can penetrate uh, than uh, the diffusion uh, through the COC can take place. You can also see a gradient from the inlet side to the outlet side which, uh, um, which tells you something about the perfusion of the system. If you use a thin PDMS chip, you can get stable growth conditions with uniform oxygen concentrations over time while the cells are growing. So I want to sum up why oxygen is so important to be measured in macrofluidic devices. Um, and it's not only a surrogate parameter for metabolic acti activity. Uh, if you're doing hypoxia research, it's a pretty important factor to know the exact oxygen concentrations or to know that there are low oxygen or no oxygen concentrations inside the chip. If you're doing phys oxia experiments, uh, you need to know the exact oxygen concentrations that are also present in the human body. That's also important in organs on a chip because if you're trying to mimic the human, physiologic, uh, human physiology, um, you need the stable oxygen conditions that are present in the human body. Furthermore, it's pretty important in stem cell research. Also in cancer research, cancer cells are known to uh, consume way more oxygen than normal cells. You can also perform cytotoxicity experiments while measuring the oxygen. 
You can do reaction control via measuring the oxygen, but you can also study inflammatory effects or you can study enzymatic reactions or monitor those enzymatic reactions. Further on, you can check the perfusion quality of your systems. Um, you can survey chemostats and see if they're really generating static conditions and much more. At the end of my presentation, I want to tell you that Resisense is not solely available for oxygen imaging, but we also have devices for imaging of pH and imaging of CO2. So what is your application in chip design? Maybe you've got some nice ideas or you want to try it out or you have further questions. You can ask your questions now. Thank you for listening. Robert, thank you. Um, we have already uh, a few questions here. Um, some is about uh, technical specifications. I start with the one, uh, what's about the resolution of the measurement? Um, the spatial resolution, the spatial resolution of the sensor is approximately 25 microns um, without the optical isolation. If you use it with the optical isolation, it gets approximately 50 to 100 microns. Okay, another question is about uh, how far can the uh, detector be uh, away from the uh, actual uh, foil? The maximum distance, uh, the maximum distance uh, from the detector to the foil can be up to 10 centimeters or even more. As long as, as, long as you have uh, a detectable fluorescent signal, you can measure the oxygen inside the chip. Okay, uh, next question here is about, uh, what's about ambient light? Um, um, what is about the presence of ambient light and is this uh, um, uh, resistant system torrent to light? Actually, uh, it needs, um, needs to avoid ambient light. Um, the optical isolation uh, takes a part in avoiding the, um, the ambient light and also the tubes that are available for the resistance can protect uh, ambient light that can come in from the from the uh, from the sides um, but it's better to measure it in dark state for example if you put it in an incubator there's no light inside and you can perfectly measure you can also measure on your lab bench but uh, it's not so good to measure in sunlight okay um, then uh, about uh, calibration uh, is the system like pre-calibrated like the sensor spots the resistance system, system is not pre-calibrated due to the reason that you have uh, different responses depending on uh, different uh, distances between the detector and the sensor foil. That's why we have the tubes that allow you to get standardized conditions but always the same field of view. Uh, you can easily calibrate uh, the sensor in your system with a two-point calibration. Okay. Um, then. Uh Another a question here is about uh, how can uh, cells uh, attach to the foil? Um, cells do either way attach to the foil by themselves. Um, cells do either way attach to the foil by themselves, or if they do not, you can facilitate attachment uh, through coating uh, the sensor foil with FCS, for example, or with ESA. You can also use polyolefin or alginate, etc. Okay, um, I just want to mention here that all questions that have not been addressed so far and uh, will come later on, uh, we will of course answer by email. Um, there is one question um, I'm even able to answer. This is about uh, can I rent the VisiSense system? The answer is yes, of course, contact us. Uh, we offer uh, the system for evaluation and uh, 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 we will be happy to um, find that solution for you. Um, and again, if you are interested in, uh, or if you have more questions, send emails to either info at presence.de or directly to robert.meyer at presence.de. The um, email address is shown on that slide. Um, okay, um, I think the uh, um, content we are heard today about the Visi was 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 really great. Uh, thank you very much again. Um, Robert will also uh, send out an email to all of you. We discussed this before uh, having the uh, link to the presentation so that you can uh, follow up. And um, of course we thank Robert again. We thank you all for your uh, time being with us today. 
and uh, we are uh, looking forward to uh, being in contact, uh, staying in contact with you. Thank you very much and have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you for listening.